so in the previous lecture we were discussing direct products right so let's see what we discussed so we saw that if we have a group point group with these are my symmetry operations and if i have x i as the linear combination which consists of various functions x1 x2 x3 and let's say xm and another basis is yj where j varies from 1 to n y2 y3 up to yn if these two form the basis of the representation then my representation would be written as certain matrices and in this case these are the characters basically right and if i have the direct product of this also forming which will also form the basis of my symmetry operations then in that case i will have another set of matrices which will form a representation right and i'll call this representation as tau xy now in this case i can always write that r when it is operated on x i y j then i get summation what we get was x j i and y l k x j and y l right so double summation with j and l going to corresponding values of m and n right okay and then we also saw that uh, we can replace this to the single number because this is a product of numbers simply so i can write this and the indices will be written as j l i k so basically this means here is if this is my m cross m matrix if this is my m cross m matrix and this is my n cross n matrix what i get here is mn cross mn matrix so z basically represents the matrix element of mn cross mn that is if i have a 3 cross 3 matrix here 2 cross 2 matrix here the direct product matrix will be a 6 cross 6 matrix right so writing this and then dealing with such matrices is not straightforward and it's rather cumbersome so what we do is we will see what is the trace of the this system so basically here what we have shown is that the character under z where z is the product of the two so i can write it as z and under any symmetry operation is the product of the two characters right this we have seen now this means if these numbers are one digit numbers that is one cross one representation then the characters gets multiplied directly but if these representations are degenerate representations that is m fold degenerate and n fold degenerate then the corresponding matrices or the corresponding characters are we have m cross m and n cross n characters and then we have to take a direct product of those matrices to actually get to the representation of the direct product right so now what we will do is we will rather work with traces and we will see why because the working with traces actually simplifies the product here okay so what we will do is we will show here what we will show here that trace of a direct product of two matrices so which is basically here so this is the direct product of two matrices here this matrix right this set of matrices is equal to product of trace of matrices that is very good point now let's say so what we are saying here is that if we take a trace and multiply these two 
what we will get is we'll get a trace of this right trace is basically sum of the diagonal elements where trace is i can say sum of the diagonal elements so carrying out the multiplication of the two matrices to obtain a direct product is not as trivial and then working with traces is much better because we will show that trace of a direct product of two matrices that is trace of this matrix is equal to product of the two traces okay now let's see how do we get that let's say mathematically what we can write we can write the statement as trace of a cross b now direct product is denoted by this symbol so this means direct product so we are saying that the trace of direct product of two matrices matrix a and matrix b is equal to product of trace of a into trace of b so now notice that this multiplication is a simple product this is a simple product because these are just the numbers so numbers can always have only the simple product whereas the two matrices have a normal matrix multiplication or a direct product right so this is a direct product okay so now let us write the two matrix with different dimensions just to make it general so let's call it as uh, 2 cross 2 matrix or yeah let's call it as 2 cross 2 so we'll say a11 and a12 this is equal to a21 and a22 right and let's call a, another matrix which is let's call it as 3 cross 3 matrix so we'll say b11 b12 b13 b21 b31 b22 b23 b32 b33 right okay so now if we have to take the direct product what we do is a direct product b now if this is 2 cross 2 if this is 3 cross 3 what we will end up is we will end up in 6 cross 6 matrix okay so that means each of this element will be multiplied by each of this element okay now that gives you a11 b11 a11 b21 a11 b31 so i have multiplied a11 first i have picked up this a11 over here and i have multiplied with all the matrix elements here like this so a11 b12 a11 b13 similarly here we will have a11 b22 a11 b23 a11 b32 a11 b33 so so on we will get 6 cross 6 matrix i am not going to write the full representation here so full matrix but you got the point so next element will be a21 multiplied with all nine elements of the b matrix right so now if we want to calculate the trace of a cross b a direct product b we will have to take all of these elements and make a summation so that means this is a11 b11 plus a11 b22 plus a11 b33 and the right hand six elements right the corner will get a basically this multiplied by all of this so we will get a22 a22 b11 a22 b22 plus a22 b33 this will be the trace because these will be the six elements along the diagonal right 
So now I can say that I can take a11 common from here. And what do I have here is b11 plus b22 plus b33. And I can take a22 common from here and I get b11, b22, b33. And this is nothing but trace of b and this is nothing but trace of b right and if i take trace of b common so i get a11 plus a22 trace of b and this is trace of a over here so trace of a into trace of b so now my life is easier because if I know the trace of this and trace of this, I simply have to multiply the two numbers to get the trace of this matrix. Okay, So that's why the working with traces is much more convenient. So we'll be working with traces here. All right. Okay. So now let us take an example over here. Okay. So let's take an example of uh, C4V. And the uh, elements are E, C2, 2C4, 2 sigma v, and 2 sigma d. And the representations I have is A1, A2. So I'm writing the Mulliken symbols now B1, B2, and E. Okay, let's also do some exercise of what information we can get from Mulliken symbols. So A1. That means this is one dimension, one dimension, one dimension, one dimension, and this should be two dimension. So we can write down the characters. Now, because this is one and two, that means the principal axis here will be C4. So principal axis will be positive here, and the principal axis will be negative here. Right? And then this we can't tell. This is C2 collinear with principal axis, and then from uh, sigma v we can say that this will be positive because this is a1 and this will be negative because this is a2 similarly positive negative and this also we cannot tell from Mulliken symbols so we have to look at the notes minus one one and the rest of this also we cannot tell zero 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 okay we could still fill a lot of uh, character table by just looking at the Mulliken symbols, right? So now let's say if we take a representation for where we have direct product of A1 and A2. So we can write down the product of the two traces and we will get 1, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. Let's take another example. Let's say if we obtain a direct product of b1 and e so what do we get 2 minus 2 and then we have 0 0 0 because these are all zeros right we can also do a direct product with self ir so e cross e will be equal to 4 4 0 0 0 okay now whether this a1 and a2 is reducible or irreducible that you can always use great orthogonality theorem to find out if a representation obtained by by the direct product of two irs Two IR representations is reducible or irreducible. Okay, so for example, if we say A1, A2, this we can directly see that it's a irreducible representation, right? Because it is composed of only A2. Similarly, B1, E, we can say that this is also a irreducible representation because it is only composed of E. E square, however, we can say that 
it does not belong to any of this so it has to be a reducible representation and we can also test it so for e square for example we can say sum of squares of characters it is 4 square plus 4 square plus 0 square plus 0 square plus 0 square this is equal to 32 whereas our h is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 Okay, right so since these two numbers are not matching that means e square is a reducible representation so that should be very easy to find out okay so now how do we find out the components what constitute e square so we can do that also so e cross e is equal to we can say a1 a1 a2 a2 a3 b1 a4 b2 and a5 a right so remember the reduction formula which we use so aj is equal to 1 over h summation over all r chi r and chi j r right so this was the reduction formula which we derived earlier so where uh, this is the character under reducible representation this is the character under irreducible representation and we can actually find out all the a's corresponding to this so let us see for this uh, we'll work it out so for a1 let's say 1 over a and we will have so this will be 1 into 4 plus 1 into 4 so what i'm doing is i'm making a product of 1 into 4 plus 1 into 4 plus whatever product does not matter because it's all zero so this will be 4 plus 4 8 so this will be 1 so that means there will be a1 component present okay so let's do for a2 so a2 will be 1 over 8 1 into 4 plus 1 into 4 plus again this will be odd 0 so we will have at least one a2 present okay so let's move forward for a3 we have to now multiply with b1 characters so 1 over 8 and doing the same thing what we will get we will get 1 i have not done the complete calculation here but what we will get is 1 and a4 also we will get 1 and we can see that a5 will be 0 so this implies that e direct product e will be equal to a1 plus a2 plus b1 plus b2 and that's all right so we can see this so if we make a sum of this 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 equal to 4 and then again 4 now 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 0 again there are two positives two negatives so 0 two positives two negatives so 0 right so it's very clear that this is a reducible representation and it gets reduced to a1 plus a2 and b1 plus b2 right okay so that is also very clear so we can say here that usually direct product of two or more higher representations will be a reducible representation so i use the word usually here because there are exceptions exceptions are if you are multiplying totally symmetric representation into any ir what you will get is 
that same IR back. Because totally symmetric presentation is all once, so multiplying anything with all once will not change anything, and then you will get the same IR back. That is very easy to see, right? Okay. So let's also see a few more or one more rule. So this is a rather important rule, so pay attention to this. In a direct product of an IR with itself, the totally symmetric representation. I'm not saying it as A or A1 because in different point groups, the nomenclature or monical symbol for totally symmetric representations can be different. Somewhere it can be A, somewhere it can be A1 and so on, right? But it has always be, it will always be A or A1 or something similar to that. But here we will use the general term totally symmetric representation. IR occurs exactly once so if we take the direct product of an ir with itself like we took direct product of e with e here in this example over here so we saw that a1 comes only once right so that is the totally symmetric representation will definitely come and it will come only for one time okay so totally symmetric representation occurs exactly once and we will also see that we will show both of these in one go. So I am just writing it together. In a direct product of two different IRs, the totally symmetric representation. never occurs so that means in the product above if we see here in for example we did this b1e so b1e this is the product of two different ir representations and in this case b1e is actually equal to only e right so there is no other representation so that means in b1e this will never occur. So similarly, if we do A2 into B1 or A2 into B2 or A2 into E or B1 E or B2 E, in any of these direct products, A1 will never come. That's what it says. And if we do self product, A1 will come and it will come exactly for once, right? So this is what it says that in a direct product of two different IRs, the totally symmetric representation never occurs. So let's try to see. Let's try to prove it. Let tau i be an ir of a group of order h. So what I mean here is that if we have a group of order h, let's call it as gh, then I can say that this is e r2 r3 and up to r h right so i'm not classifying these as different classes i'm just writing r1 r2 r3 r4 r h and r1 i'm simply writing as e so let's say i have a tau 1 which is the totally symmetric representation so i'll have all ones here and i have a general ir which is tau i Okay, so that means here it will be Li, which is the dimension of this. It can be one or anything. And then I'll have different characters or matrices depending on the dimension of this. R2, R3, and so on, Rh. Now, if I do a direct product of tau i into tau i, what do I get? I get Li square, then I get R2 square, R3 square, Rh square, right? So here, now if I want to find out the component IRs of this, then I can say that 
ai is equal to 1 over h summation over all r this is directly from reduction formula so this is character under direct product and this is the character for the corresponding irreducible representation right so for totally symmetric representation if we want to find out what is the component for totally symmetric representation we can say that this will be a1 and this will be tau 1 here so i can say that a1 is equal to 1 over h summation over all r chi a b over r and this will be character under any symmetry operation corresponding symmetry operation which will be actually one right so that product is not to be written there because this will be one it will always for all r's it will be always one so this implies that i can write my character as chi a r chi b r right so i can always use this equation here so a1 is equal to 1 over h summation over all r a r where a and b are two irreducible representations right so that means i can say that from great orthogonality theorem i can say that this is 1 over h into h delta a right so summation over all our character of two ir representations gives you delta we have learned this in terms of chi i chi j and this will be delta ij remember so this is directly from got properties so if you go back and look at the lectures where properties five properties of got were discussed we had discussed this one so that means now h is cancelled here so this is basically delta ab so a1 is nothing but delta ab so now we can say that if a is equal to b then a1 is equal to 1 and if a is not equal to b a1 is equal to 0 so now here we have shown the first case which we wanted to show if in the direct product of an ir representation with itself where a will be equal to b basically so a1 is equal to 1 a1 means the totally symmetric representation will come only once and it will always come it will come only once if the direct product is of two different IR representations, then A1 or that is the totally symmetric representation will never come, right? So that is also easy to see, all right? So I think that is all for this lecture. And now next class, we will see how do we use direct products, okay? So those examples, we will see what is the actual application of direct products in uh, solving some problems of quantum mechanics that we will see in next class. All right. Thank you.